I don't know what will I say about my life. Do I have a happy life? Do I have a sad life? Because up to now, believe it or not, guys, I dream of him. And the bad part of my dream is I never dream of bad moments. I don't know why it's been happening to me the good moments of my life. Within earshot of the fighting which still rages in the remaining enemy-held buildings of South Manila, a simple ceremony is held to mark the rebirth of the Philippine Commonwealth government. Speaking over the radio networks and before an audience which packed the state reception room of the palace, General MacArthur bitterly denounced the Japanese for their wanton destruction of Filipino life and property and said that the Filipino Commonwealth was now at liberty to pursue its destiny in the family of nations. War babies, these are children that was uh, born from, 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 from 1946 to, I think, up to 1951. This, these are babies born out of wedlock. What, what, what I mean of out of wedlock is the parents are not married, so the child, in short, is illegitimate. The, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the U.S. government and the Philippine government have, have an agreement that all these children born out of wedlock or born during this, this, this time period from, from, from the end of the war in 1940, 1945 up to 1951 will be granted a, a, an American citizenship, American uh, serviceman, and Filipino woman. These are war babies. My mother is, was born and raised in San Pablo City with a little prominent family, but after the war, they become so poor. Due to some kind of hardship that drove her to, to go play to places like Angeles, Pampanga, or Olongapo City in Subic Bay, she went there against her will because the family that she left behind in San Pablo are really in poverty. That's when my mother learned how to work with the, with the U.S. Army or the U.S. Navy. And from that point, my mother found that, it's, that that's the only place where she can use her, uh, her body to, to, to support the family back here. So she worked as a hostess in Olongapo. My brother, father, is a German-American. He is an Air Force, and he was stationed in Clark Air Base. My dad is a French-American. He was stationed in Subic Bay. My brother was, uh, was, 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 was uh, conceived back in Angeles when my mother was first, there, was first working there in, in, in Angeles City in Pampanga. But unfortunately, his, according to our mother, his father died in the airplane on his way back to, to, to the United States. My, my, my father joined the Navy, tried to join the Navy back then in 1948, if I'm not mistaken, and unfortunately he was only 16 years old. The ruling is that he must be 18 to join the military. So what my father did, he took my uncle's birth certificate, Uncle Benjamin, back in the United States, and he used it to join the Navy because during those days, Uncle Ben is 18 years old. But unfortunately, Uncle Ben is already in the Army. 
So what my dad did, he turned around and joined the Navy. He was accepted, assuming that Benjamin Collier is my dad, but without knowing that Benjamin Collier is already in the Army, and that's my dad's uh, older brother. So when my dad was in the Navy, he never made a paycheck, because there's already a Benjamin Collier. So my dad, to make money, he shine shoes, he do laundry inside the ship to make an extra money because he doesn't have a paycheck. Then two years after that, after that my dad turns 18. And the Department of the, of the Military in the United States found out that this Benjamin Collier in the Navy and Benjamin Collier in the Army are totally two different persons. And they found out that they are brothers. So they approached my dad and said, what in the hell have you done? And my dad says, well, we go hungry, what can I do? So my dad stepped out of Subic Bay, he was stationed in Subic Bay then, in Longapol, and he got all this money inside a paper bag. As he walked out of the base, there is a bridge connecting Olongapo and Subic Bay. There's a bridge there that we call the Olongapo River, and he bumped into my mom. And my mom says to my dad, well, watch where you're going. And my dad told my mom, they had a good time. My mom says, with what? Then my dad opened the paper bag and showed my mom the two years money that he got from the Navy. And then my mom says, of course, Lord, just come on, let's have a good time. My dad fell in love. No, my mom fell in love with my dad because of that <laughs> big bag of money that my stupid dad was carrying around in Subic Bay. After my mom met my dad, of course, they, went, they, they live a very lavish life. They went to Manila. It didn't last long. My mom spent it, I think, in three months between my dad. There are many arcaded sidewalks in Manila. For although sunstroke is unknown, it is more pleasant and cooler to keep in the shade during the heat of the day. Each section of the city has its market, where practically everything used by the Filipinos can be purchased. So my mom decided to take my dad home in San Pablo City under a wall, absence without labor. And that's a total no-no to the US military. That's when the hardship started. Due to the hardship, my mom was forced to surrender my dad in Sunny Point, Kabiri City, because he cannot handle looking at my dad going star. So my dad under a wall, bingo. He was sent back to the United States. He spent, I think, one, more, more than one year in Lompoc, California. That's a big jail in the United States. So here I am, conceived in the Philippines. My, I was born without the presence of my father. I gave a choice between between prominent woman and, and, and a poor one. I just and we have two kids. I am a real, real happy with my life during those days. But forget about how hard, how, what kind of hardship I have, because I see with my, with my, with my relationship with my, with my wife, I became very happy about it. And that's when I started also to migrate to the United States, because I'm thinking of my two kids to bring them over. So I left, I think if I'm not mistaken, February 28, 1980, and my cousin is the one who picked me up at the airport, and her name is Evelyn. Life is going as planned. Try to look for a job, try to, to look for a place to settle myself. Life is going on pretty much normal or above normal. I am very, very, very satisfied with what's going on. Then one day my cousin passed by and told me, hey, Dennis, come on, let's have a drink. 
I said, whoa, first time I'm going to have a drink here in San Francisco. And as we stroll along, I didn't know anything about this uh, Pope Street or, or Castro Street that, that this is a gay bar or gay community. Here comes the party. This is the, 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 the part that where a light in a ball hit my brain or hit my heart or hit whatever part of my body that I start trembling. I saw this skinny, blonde, blue eyes, son of a gun, walking around and I said, what in the hell is going on? And Evelyn said, hey, 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 what's going on? Oh, no, no, I'm just looking. Here I found myself, I went to the bar, I bought a drink and offered it to that guy. I said to myself, what in the is going on with me that I offered a guy a drink. And guess what? The son of a bitch turned down my drink. He said, no, I don't drink. I said, what in the hell? I, feel, I felt so embarrassed that I asked a man for a drink and that goddamn son of a gun turned down my offer. So I sat down, pissed off, very mad. I said, why not? Let me ask him to dance. I get up again, being, being an idiot, so stupid. I get up and ask this guy to dance. Guess what did he say? No, I don't dance. That's when my head blew up and I told my cousin, let's get back out of this place. I hate this place and we went home. I used to play with flowers and, and, and dolls. Back then, huh? that's what I remember. But every time I come home, they spank me. My, 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 I have two uncles and a brother who is three years old, two, two and a half years older than me, that every time I play with flowers or anything that has something to do that the girl used to play, oh, they beat the shit out of me. I, when I mean beat the shit out of me, I got hit in the head with a knuckle or they pull my ear up there or they spank me and they stop doing that. Then one day there's an incident that I'm playing with my, with my childhood playmate and I'll put her name as Maria, I cannot mention her name because she passed away already. She was playing without a panty. This is not a joke. And I saw her private part. I started screaming and crying, running back home and saying, why, why what, what's wrong with you? Oh, I saw the, the private part of Maria, oh, I'm afraid. This is when everybody started laughing. Two months after that, or maybe three months after that, that face that I saw on that bar won't pry up in my goddamn stupid brain. I said, no, I have to go up, I have to see what's going on. Someone kicked me right in my ass, right in my butt. I said, what are you, and then I look at him, it's him. It's him, that guy who turned me down on my drink offer and my dance offer. I said, no, what do you want? He said, no, you can buy me a drink and you can dance with me. I said, no way. I said, after what you did to me that night? He said, well, you got them idiot. I am working that night as a waiter, and we are not allowed to accept drinks, or we're not allowed to oh, dance with anybody. This is exactly what I told him. I'll buy you a drink and dance with you in one condition. He said, what's that? You go home with me. Well, I tell you, it doesn't seem to be normal. And when something's not normal, it doesn't function right. Totally out of hand. It's immoral. People have lost their basic sense of values. They've lost their basic sense of just absolute beliefs, especially in Castro. You're talking about the gay community here? I'm talking about the gay community, especially in Castro, because I live right here. Yes, I'm gay. Well, I think it's all our own business. I have gay friends. I can't see anything wrong. I ask myself a million times, I ask myself a billion times, what happened? What happened to this, to this? to this guy who came from the Philippines, who is a macho, God damn it, and then when I arrived in the United States, here I am kissing a guy and having sex with him in my house.
Rade is from Rhode Island. He is an Irish American. He transferred to San Francisco to look for a good opportunity. He showed too much talent in food and beverage. That's when our life became very prosperous until Rodney became a certified food and beverage executive. So me and Rodney had a very lavish life. He showed me how much he loved me. And that's how life became prosperous. Rodney became a very known person in, in the hotel food industry from, from San Francisco to Los Angeles. gate cruise with, with royal cruise line that we're going to see the Caribbean islands. Here we come on our first gay cruise. Gorgeous, gorgeous men in front of you in a cruise ship, all gay, all in tuxedo. What would you feel? Of course, you have to be there. You enjoy life and go to the swimming pool. They pull down your shirt. They pull down your your underwear. This is life. I said, whoa! polygamous people, hindi tayo naniniwala sa monogamous relationship. That's why gay people tend to be happy. Gay all the time. Another gay cruise, but this time, they will send you to an island, somewhere in the Car Caribbean island, and this is what I think the, the island is called Santa Maria. Towels, clothes not required. I'm in heaven. Nung panahon namin, walang, walang bakla na nalabas sa telebisyon. No, 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 you're not allowed. Nung panahon namin, eh, ang mga bakla, eh, napapansin ko nun kung mga hunting sila sa dilim, o kaya ay eh, nagtatago sa mga likod ng building, o kaya sa labas ng pinto ng bahay nila, when it's dark, they call you like this, come here. That's how gay people used to, to, to get a partner back then. But back then, they look at us, we are not humans. We are gay. We are not included in the community of men and white and living, and living humans here in the city. We are animals. Or even worse, we are not like that. They hate us. So when, when you walk around, 
ano na sabi na ito yung putang ng back lang yun, no? Ito mo yun, no? Napakalam din yun, no? Naku, ikaw ka makabarkada dyan. Pag naal mo ko bumabarkada ka dyan, gugulpihin ka namin. Yun ang mga seltano ng mga magulang pag nakita nila na ang mga anak nila ay bumabarkada sa mga bakla. That's how bad we are. But the gay people nowadays, especially in the Philippines, we have been in a long, long, for, we, we, we move forward. We prove to them na gay people are not like that. We are people with soul, we are people with compassion, we are people who knows how to love other people. Nineteen eighty-six. First trip to the Philippines. Arrived in San Pablo City. I have, don't forget, I have two kids. Rodney helped me raise my children. Financially, emotionally, and, and all kind of support that is that is that are needed by children. Binigay lahat ni Rodney sa sa aking mga anak. And and to add the spice in our life. You know, here I am, because my brother's in the Navy, my dad is in the Navy. So what sparked in my brain? I joined the reserve. That's how I became attached to the military until became the first Iraqi war. We were activated. We were activated not to fight, but we were there to build housing or build a, a barracks for the military that we have from the United States that we have to fly to, 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 to Saudi Arabia. That's how I became activated for three months. These are the days when, uh, the only days that me and Radhi were separated. So I, I decided to, to not to renew my contract anymore because Radhi doesn't want me to be in the military. He wants me always to be beside him. I heard that he did the wild things when I was when I when I, when, I, when I did not travel with him back then. But when I travel alone, of course he's a saint. But when I'm not around, everybody enjoyed him. I think that's the reason why he keep on coming back. Now I'm thinking, me growing up as a macho man, uh, a real man, suppressed with all my happiness in life that dawned on me that, wow, everything, God loves me, huh? And, but everything becomes short. Out of this love is life that I'm having, everything becomes short. We own a border apartment, we have cars, we have four, car, four cars in the backyard, and then Radhi got hit by a sudden illness. They found out that he had cancer. He got brain tumor. That's when the dark, but that's when I saw the darkness in my life, because I know this will not last long. So when, Rodney, when they diagnosed Rodney with brain tumor, they gave him from six months, maybe to a year, to, to live. And he was diagnosed back in, 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 in March. Then March, April, May, June, they approved under Proposition 8, state of California that same-sex marriage is legal. This is back in 2008 before this big decision of the Supreme Court. Rodney said, do you want to get married? I said, of course. I love you. And that day he's already ill. He's not that strong anymore. He managed, we ma he managed to, 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 to walk and we went to West Hollywood and we got married.
as the judge was was telling, yes, do you love this man? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. The judge cannot understand my words. All I know is I am sobbing. The judge asked me, is that because of joy? Why, why, why you, you're over crying? He, he, the, the judge told me the word over crying. And she, she, she looked at me like as if she, she's thinking that, I, that I'm overreacting. So I told the judge, no, I am marrying a dying man. He have only too much to live. What do you want me to do? Have a good time? The judge dropped the book. I, I'm sorry, he, she apologized. I didn't know, and now you see the judge herself is crying. How hard would you think it would be to marry the man you love from head to toe that you marry someone who is dying? The judge says, wait, 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 wait a minute. I have one more question. Rodney, do you take Dennis as your, as your lawful spouse? When Rodney answered yes, now I pronounce you husband and husband. Doon, doon ko pinaupo si Rodney, doon ko siya hinalikan, for the last time na alam ko, na hinahal ka ako makawala sa akin. But we are lucky na kami isa sa mga persuade, persuade kami ng Amerika, then from that day, nang may uwi ko na si Rodney, uti-uti na nagde-deteriorate ang kanyang health. Kasi nga, one of brain tumor, yung, yung, yung brain tumor niya, Yung, yung part na nagkukuman sa katawan, how to move. Yung sa kanya, itong kamay, dahan-dahang sumasara sa pisngi, nakagano'n. Hindi maalis yan. Miski iangat mo yan, hindi kayang alisin. Kaya ginagawa ko, nasa likod ako ni Rodney sa kama, ako ang nakahiga, si Rodney nakahiga sa akin. Ako ang dalawa niya kamay. Da, ganun na yan, hindi na maalis yan. Dennis, it's itchy. So ang gagawin ko, iangat ko to, yung isang kamay ko, ikakamot ko doon habang pagbinatahan mo yan, pa, it's just like a spring. It goes back. Na lumulubog yan, ang ginawa ko, so what I did, I took a very small piece of wood, very smooth. I put it in between his, his cheek and so that this, this one doesn't sink in. Because Randy is already losing, losing a lot of weight. So the bone is getting sharp as it goes deeper on his cheek. That's the brain tumor that, that, that affected his body. So I lay there for six months in bed, being his two hands at the back. I did, I think, I even prayed to God, na, 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 na. why him? Why not me? Yeah, lang nga. Wala na sa akin si Rodney. I don't know what will I say about my life. Do I have a happy life? Do I have a sad life? Because up to now, believe it or not, guys, I dream of him. And the bad part on my dream is I never dream of bad moments. Ewan ko kung bakit ipinapanaginit na sa akin yung, yung good moments of my life, yung happy moments namin. Napapanaginit pa ako yan almost every night after all the years that he passed away. Ang tanong ko ay, bakit mo ginagawa sa akin, Randy? Why do you let me dream of you? Of those happy moments, stop it. I want to go on with my life. Under the California law, nang mamatay si Rodney, doon, doon lahat ng minana mo pupunta sa probate court. The probate court will be the one who, will, who is in charge of distributing the, the, the asset of the person who passed away. But before they distribute that, before, listen carefully, they have also to collect the total money owned by the deceased. Ito si Rodney. Meron siyang 2.8 million hospital bill, meron siyang, of course, he have credit cards. At saka noon siya ay disabled na, we rely on, uh, on spending our savings and rely on disability checks, which is not enough because of the hospital itself, medication alone. 
So after the probate court have have collected all the asset, after the probate court already total the money owned of Rodney Smith, the deceased, it totaled to maybe about something like three point one million dollar on the side. But my asset, our apartment, the, the bank account, my, my my collection that I put on this on this uh, safe deposit, I have, I have several old coins and uh, old gold coins that I put on this safety deposit, which is not in my name. Those are all confiscated by the probate court. I end up with a negative uh, $600,000 inheritance. So, because now I'm poor, I'm, I'm, I'm ready now a beggar. So in short, I'm a beggar. Before he passed away, there's one thing he asked me, that Dennis, I want to be buried in the Philippines. Because we always, he always come back here in the Philippines from time to time, with or without me. He doesn't care about me anymore. He enjoy Philippines very much. And I said, what do you want? Can you bury me in the Philippines? I said, sure I can. And then he said, no, I'm not yet done. I want you to bury me on your birthday. I said, what? My birthday is December 26. So you mean to say after Christmas I have to bury you? He said, yes. I said, why? So that you don't forget me, you asshole. It hurts. Just like a thorn that's going deeper and deeper in my heart and my brain. There are days I cannot bear it. And every time I see it, that's when I lose my sanity. Tears just roll in my eyes. Never stop. That's what I said. I think this, he had, this is, he always give me the sweetest thing in my life. This is the one that hurts the most. And this is the first one that hurts the most. And it will never go away. It will never fade away. Pain. But I'm glad he's at peace. That's all I can say. But me, I'm, I'm in pain. It will, I cannot deny that. This is the only love of my life. Guys, if you meet someone you love, straight, gay, or whatever, make sure you, you mean it, nah, you love the person. And don't be shy about it. Be proud about it. Ipag malaki nyo na, I'm proud to be gay. Yun ang ginawa ko. Nang, 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 nang mangyari ito sa buhay ko, wala ako ikinahiya. Wala. Ni, ni, ka, ni kapata, ni sa mga kamag-anak ko, sa mga relation ko, never been shy. Be proud of it. I don't say being gay, happy. But that's the way we are.
God is request that he want to be buried in the Philippines. So I check at the airline how much will it take to, to ship a remain to the Philippines. $5,000. I said, well, in the hell, where will I get that money? I'm already a beggar. So it sparked on my brain. I, I called Sergio, my best friend who used to help us, who helped us a lot. I said, get a balik bayan box from LBC. Guess what? I told Sergio, buy a second-hand stereo with big speaker, make sure this urn fit inside. Put Radley's urn inside the, inside the goddamn uh, stereo speakers, and I ship Radley's assets in the Philippines by LBC. Not by United, by, by not by Philippine Airlines or any expensive airlines. He went to a, ship, to, to, to a cargo ship inside the box that says LBC Mabuhay.